Holy Wiremod here. Welcome to tutorial 27 in the GLUA Pro series, where we're going to be taking a very in-depth look at traces. This will be a little lengthy tutorial, so uh, be prepared, get a snack, and stay tuned. So let's go into key press. Key press, of course, we're going to be just clicking left key, and then any code inside of here we're going to be executing. Very simple, we have the player model set to combine super soldier so we don't have to default spawn and lastly we're going to have bot which can be spawned in by typing bot in the console and just pressing enter okay so let's get started into the trace result so a trace result is going to be a table which you obtain from the util function called quick trace now quick trace is going to take a line in front of the player from position a so we're going to have get position right here so this is going to be the player's position then we're going to have the player's position plus the get forward so right in front of the player x amount of units which is going to determine the distance by how much we multiply by so we're going to have a line from the player to 1000 units in front of the player anything which touches that line during the trace will provide something called trace result data we have the third argument being player here by the way the trace results will be a table so we're going to be printing that to the console on the left hand side let's go into the game and just click on some walls and now you can see we are getting some information about the world spawn entity. We have all the data and the key values on the left hand side, all solid entity, fractions, hits, hitbox, etc. And this is a very good way for you to get the textures of a map. If you are a map maker and you have no idea what the texture is, well, that's how you do it. All right, so let's go into a more defined trace. We have a way to specify some uh, conditions and what you want to filter out in a trace with something called a trace data table which is utilized by a hull trace and a line trace. Now, a line trace is similar to what we did with quick trace. However, we are going to get a little bit more in depth with this trace data. So the only argument here is going to be called trace data. Now, let me explain the trace data to you. We're going to have the start position. Then we're going to have the in position. We are only going at 100 units, and I'll show you why in a second. Then we're going to have the mask. This is going to filter out units based upon their physical properties. For example, we only want solid entities to be considered in this trace. A uh, collision group is going to be the type of entity, so it's going to be player in this case. We can put vehicle, we can put another entity, that's fine too. I'll put the enumerations in the link in the description below. And then we have a filter, so if we want some more specific filtering other than the mask in the collision group, we can do that with this function. So any entity which is hit within the line defined by the start and end position, or between those two points, is going to be brought into here. We can do a conditional check, return true if that's the entity that we want. So if we want NPCs, if we want players, uh, if we want bots in this case, that's what we do. If we don't want them, we'd put false here as well, and that's how you utilize the filter. So now we have a line trace set up. Let's go into the game, and let's go trace some lines. All right, so now I'm going to point without 100 units or missing the target, it's going to have a null entity. When I hit the target, we're going to have the bot. And that's going to be all the information about the bot. Uh, you can do it with the world spawn also. That works fine too. Okay, so what about a hull trace? Well, a hull trace, instead of a skinny little line going out in front of you, think of a box or rectangle being projected right in front of you and anything that touches that box or rectangle will provide trace results. So here we're going to have a box which is going to have one corner to find it a vector of 20, 20, 20. And the opposing corner is going to be defined at 20, 20, 20 as well. And we're going to have a box collective size, which is a 40, 40, 40 in the X, Y, Z respectively. And this box of 40, 40, 40 is going to be sent out right in front of you. And that gives you a little leeway to where you can actually miss the target that you're aiming at and still get some result data. Remember, it has to be within 100 units else it's not going to work so well and it's going to take the first thing that you hit by the way for the trace results so here we have the bot information that works just fine so let's move on to the next example the next example we're going to have something called trace entity coincidentally the best way to get the information for the trace entity is to use another util command called get player trace now get player trace is we're going to have the player which is going to be the filtered player and then we're going to have get aim vector now get aim vector is just going to take whatever you're looking at right in front of you and it's going to print some information about that so let's save that go into the game as you can see we get the in position we get the filter which is the player the first argument and the starting position we can go out as long as we want it's not governed by distance and that works fine now let's go back 
and let us then put this as the first argument for trace entity. Let second and last argument is going to be player. And then we are going to provide some trace results. And this is a very simple way for you to do a trace. That works just as fine. And it's a little tricky hitting the entities with this one. So it's a good way to get some world spawn data. Very quick, very easy. And and then let's go into something which I built up to in the last tutorial, which is called a trace attack. Trace attack utilizes damage info, which we went over in the last tutorial. So we have some basic damage info here, damage, bullets, it's explained in the last tutorial if you don't understand. And we're going to be taking the trace here instead of a trace entity, we're going to use the trace line. We're going to use trace data as such. And we're going to be taking this trace information and utilizing it as arguments for here. So the victim of the damage or the attack is going to be the entity right here. So the trace entity, then we're going to dispatch a trace attack. Now, when doing it like this, it's very wise to make sure you actually have a valid entity. So we're going to do is valid. So TR entity, then we'll do that. Otherwise, you're going to get an error which is not nice, so it's just good practice to put invalid here, or is valid here. So the first argument is going to be the damage info, which we defined above. The second argument is going to be the trace data. So that's going to be TR from this line trace. And then lastly, we're going to have uh, what we're aiming at, which is going to be from the hit normal of the trace information or the trace results. And then we're just going to save that. And lastly, there is a hook which actually corresponds with this trace attack. It's called GM player trace attack. And we have player damage info direction and trace. Here we're just going to be printing a trace hook. We're going to return false if we do not want to override the default damage handling and prevent scale damage. We're going to return true if we do want to prevent that uh, and override the actual damage handling. So uh, for now we're just going to put false and we're going to print the players so I can show you that it's actually working. And something I do want to note is that you should not be dispatching a trace attack in hooks such as on take damage because you will get an infinite loop and that is not good. All right, so let's go into here and let's go find an entity. So as you can see, I have a null entity, so it's not doing anything. And that's where we have the is valid. Now, if I go within 100 units, I hurt bot 5. He's running away for dear life. And we killed bot 5 with a trace attack. Now notice at the bottom in the console it says player 3 bot 05 and then it says trace hook and that's just to show you that this hook up in here is indeed working as I said. So okay so we have that. Then we have something called a trace hull attack. Now the trace hull attack um, is going to be defined as such. We're going to have the player performing the attack this time and then we're going to have trace hull attack. We're going to have the trace data start. So let's say we want to have uh, trace data. And then we're just going to put the starting position. We are going to put the ending position right here. So in position, we are going to have the minimum S because we're going to be having a box here, kind of like the hull trace, max S, damage done, damage type. So let's say we want to burn the target. How much damage is it for? And this is going to just be a filter. Or we're going to have false for that. It's OK uh, if we do that. So now we're going to have hull attack. And let's go find the other bot right here. So here we go. And then we're going to have a bot for taking 10 damage each. All right. So that's fine. I'm sorry. This 100 I said uh, was damage. It's actually the distance. OK. So um, this one's the damage. All right, so now we have some other ways that we can actually get uh, trace data. We don't have to define it in a table as such. So I'm just going to get rid of all this as we don't need it anymore. And we're going to be using print table. Something we can do is called get touch trace. So this is going to provide trace data based upon the entity that we last touched. So I touched the floor last. Now we have the floor. I touched this one last. Now I have the building template concrete floor. As you can see, when I'm uh, determining all this by the hit texture key values, as you can see below. 
And that's that. So it works for players too. Uh, if I were to jump in to hit this ground right here. There we go. So now we have the information based upon what I last touched. What about whatever I'm facing or whatever direction I'm facing? Well, you can also do that very simply by doing git eye trace. Now, git eye trace, of course, is whatever I'm looking at. Here we go. We have concrete floors, ground. Now, there is an instance where you have your context menu open and perhaps you want to not uh, do the trace towards where your mouse is pointing. Well, you can do that simply by putting no cursor in front of this and it'll do just that and work the same as such. So that's going to be everything for traces, which we really need for the swaps that I'm going into soon. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and that it was very informative. If you have any questions, feel free to leave some in the comments section below. And if you like the content, feel free to like, subscribe, share, comment, bell, and all that fun stuff. And I'll catch you guys in the next tutorial. Have a great day and thank you for watching. Don't forget to check out Hexane Networks for affordable and high-performance server hosting. That's Hexane Networks, whose link is in the description below.